Alrighty, y'all, too. So, I got this uh, Chevy Cheyenne, and I mistakenly put a carburetor only distributor in place of my OEM distributor. So, now I had to get rid of my EVI unit for the sake of saving money and not spending any money on this project. I had sitting around an Edel Rock 600 from the Porsche. And then I decided I was just going to lob off the secondaries and use it like a quasi 300 CFM carburetor without the secondaries working. Figure since I've got the carburetor going on, we'll go ahead and hook up the dual fuel system. So this video, I'm going to, at least I'm going to attempt to put it in. And I don't know if uh, y'all be able to understand or even if I'll be able to understand uh, how this system works. But uh, so I've been told it uh, delivers liquid propane into the uh, Chevy small block. So this ought to be interesting. First step is I got to adapt that carburetor out to fit this two barrel intake. And uh, then we got to start working on how this here dual fuel system. So, stick with me. It's going to be a hell of a movie, video, whatever you want to call it. So, this is how I adapted the two barrel lower intake manifold for a 4.3 to accept a four barrel carburetor that I have adapted to only be in two barrels. It's just a plate of aluminum, and I drilled a couple holes in it to bolt it to the top of the intake manifold and you can see up here in this corner or somewhere uh, where you probably shouldn't do this because there is coolant behind here however I sealed it up with some RTV so be that as it may whatever with a plate mounted sound down nice and tight you got a random piece of gasket paper perfection we can drop our carburetor on there and you see there's little holes that I tapped in the plate of aluminum so I can stick M6 one and a quarter bolts or M6 M610 M610 bolts and those bolts Fasten your old carburetor down. Just like so. Little rubber gasket. Thingy. Quarter 20. It's three and a quarter inches long. All right, with the cable routed, you got to clock this regulator. So that means clocking these screws and getting this cable ready to pull on the dongleberry. It comes in from this side and then clamps in. So that's a lot of excess cable. With the cable installed, it should look like this, so that when you pull the cable, it pushes down on this di or up on this diaphragm. That allows for air to come in. So you're when you're running gasoline, you pull on the cable. When you're running propane, you close it. Pro tip: a little bit of super glue will hold the gasket in place while you're installing it.
sacred stations with zero interruptions. At the end of your free trial, if you're digging out free music, sign up for just five bucks a month. Have then in place, we'll stay there until it starts hitting gasoline. And there's plenty of gasoline in there, so it'll go away. Apparently there's a gasket that goes right here. The burst disc should be able to burst out. When final completion, your setup should look similar to this. With no kinks in the hose going down to the regulator. Regulator should have plumbed into it two coolant lines. And your fuel inlet. This is liquid gas. This is vapor. Vapor comes out of the bottom. All of these fittings should have adequate amounts of either silicon tape or PTFE or rector seal, rector seal, rector seal, rectum seal, whatever. If you follow the line back, you'll see our fuel filter. Pop it valve in case of tank overpressure. It should be outside of the engine bay. That way, in case the tank uh, decides to explode, it'll vent here before anywhere else. This is our liquid line. Goes underneath the car. Back here to our propane tank in the back. Has our shutoff which isn't wired up at the moment. And our gas nozzle. This will get fixed in at a later date. The hardest and most complicated part for last. So this is how I got power. I couldn't figure out the fuel pump relay because I'm retarded. So, I went directly from this fuel fuse, but I didn't want to lower the, or raise the resistance in this fuel pump circuit. So I got a relay from, from the bin. Blue wire went into the fuel fuse, yellow wire, went into going from the fuel fuse back to the harness. White is ground. And then the black wire goes to inside the truck. I use one of these little doodads to steal power from the injection computer, which we have carburetors, so why do I have an injection computer? Ran up here to the old, this guy. Put positive power from that jump off box into both of these center posts. I just jumped over, because we're, we're relatively low, low amperage here. I'm just using a big wire, because that's what I had laying around. And this is the wire that gives positive power to the solenoid for the propane. 
this is where the positive power from the goes to the fuel pump, the gasoline fuel pump. Solenoid, I just grabbed a ground that was here from some other guy who put a stereo in. One last little bit of note. These tanks deliver both vapor and liquid fuel. You want the liquid fuel for this setup. So you got to lay it on its side and it'll have marked vapor and liquid. You want the liquid. Um, I don't know how else to say that. I didn't know that. So now I do. And right, I'll button it up and give it a run. alternate fuel. So now it's all done. I, I put the difficulty a little bit beyond just putting the carb on. This kit's uh, pretty well put together. They give you a lot of extra parts. You can adjust the propane fuel ratio with this little nozzle up here on top. It's kind of nice. Uh, Definitely an interesting thing, and it makes this truck, um, makes me more interested in this truck. <laughs> and that's what it's done more than anything, because usually I just don't care. I mean, you can look at the truck and see that I don't care about it. But uh, like and subscribe and comment and tell me if I did anything wrong, because I truly want to know if I did anything wrong. And that's all I have.